um, the Oncidium Orchid, otherwise known as the Dancing Ladies, because they look like ladies with skirts and dancing along. Uh, they're very dramatic in appearance, but they're very easy to do. And they always come in sprays like this with some buds and some open flowers, which is great to use to adding height to your Gumpay's flower um, arrangement or to add length to it as well. You can do like just white or um, yellow version of that flower. It comes in a wide variety of, of colors and I suggest that you go to the internet and Google it. Google some pictures of the flower so that you have an idea of um, the variety, the wide variety of the uh, flower. So to start with, I'm just um, forming a, uh, um, a long teardrop with some green gum paste. And I'm going to make a, like a Mexican hat technique here, like so. So um, you can actually use the, the uh, tail or the handle of your uh, needle tool and spread that gum paste around. You can even use the handle of your brush or if you have like a pick or a small rolling pin of course that's very handy to use as well. So this is what they call a witch's hat or a Mexican hat technique where you basically start with a teardrop and then you end up with like a notch right in the middle like a Mexican sombrero almost. And um, if you are using the Petal Crafts uh, set of uh, uh, Dancing Lady Cutters, you will receive two sets of cutters, one that's shaped like an apple, one that is shaped kind of like a star, and you will also have a, um, a veiner that goes along with it. So for this uh, Mexican sombrero, I'm going to use the one that's shaped like a star, and just basically place that notch right in the middle. And I'm going to go ahead and cut that, again press it down and then shake it a little bit. That way you get that really nice and clean cut. Also, what can help is that you have to make sure that the uh, edges of your cutter is nice and clean. You can rub a little bit of uh, vegetable shortening um, right on the uh, edges of it so you know that the gum paste will not stick. So I'll take that um, that part of the flower and use my ball tool I'm going to turn it upside down. This is the back of my flower. So I'm going to turn it upside down and use the little ball tool that I have and thin out and stretch kind of like the head part, the arm part, and the leg part of my, of my flower. And as you can see, I'm just really just basically thinning it. I'm not doing anything to to it at all because it doesn't really have much of a of a movement and I'm just making sure that this is actually curved you know um, forward and the arms as well are curved forward. Now I'm going to take a number 26 Flora wire and cut about two and a half inches in length And form a tip of it into an open hook. Okay, I'll brush that a little bit with my gum glue. And you can use the tip of your brush, just poke a hole right in the middle and thread that. Um, wire along up to where it's not visible anymore. Okay, so I'll dry this part for about 24 hours, 24 to 48 hours, so it's nice and dry. Okay, so for the apple part of the flower, I'm just 
going to roll a little piece of, of white gum paste. Of course, if you're making yellow or um, white uh, flour, you can use whatever color that you may choose. And this is actually thicker. This is thicker than what I would normally roll my gum paste with. And I'm just going to cut that. I would say this is about double the thickness of um, how I would normally roll or thin my gum paste with. So I'll take that apple part, put it on my foam pad, and I'm going to use my plastic ball tool just because it has that very small ball. And I'm going to just thin out that part, the one that's the stem part that looks like an ear almost and then both of those and then again I'm going to put this right on the side of my pedal pad and um, if I'm not on camera I will actually do this on a um, on the side of my of the table that way I'm free to move around my my hand and I would uh, position my needle tool to where it's like 45 degrees um, uh, angle to my pedal pad and I would rock back and forth and instead of moving my needle tool I would move it gum paste and thin out the next part instead of like doing it all the way I actually do it to where my needle tool can reach it just rock back and forth and then move on to the next rock back and forth and the next back and forth until you reach all the way to the other end So now after you've done it, as you can see, it's all like curled up um, into a ball. You can actually take your ball tool and kind of like stretch that out so it's not too curled. And this is why you wanted to begin with a thick gum paste too so that um, you get as much movement as you can on the flower. So as you can see. You don't really want to make it open, you just want it like curled like this. And so after you've dried your, the first part of your flower, so you can see this, is how, this has dried like 24 hours, I would brush it with a little bit of gum glue right on the center to where it's like nice and, and um, sticky but not too wet. I'll put this right on top to cover that hole right on top of that and with my Dresden tool the one that's shaped like a foot and I'm using the narrow and I would draw a line I would draw a line from the middle going down and as you can see as I do that the ear part of it kind of like moves forward too so So after you've done this, then you will dry this for another 24 hours before we begin painting. So this one's already dry. So after it's dried for about 24 hours and everything's like nice and nice and sturdy, we can start painting. And I would take my burgundy, you can use burgundy or brown um, gel paste and a 5-0 or 3-0 brush. I would take that and for the green part or the upper part the head and the arm part of the uh, flower I would draw kind of like tiger stripes as you can see and it's just you know alternating tiger stripes that are really close to each other like so
and there's really no rule to this you just basically draw like lines but you don't really want it to be like straight lines you want it like curved inconsistent lines and I just do it like alternating just like so And then for the skirt part, I would get my scratch paper and some Sahara, I'm going to use Sahara Petal Dust or any brown burgundy-ish shade and just drag that petal dust from the edge of your skirt going towards the, the center. And I just want to make sure that I still have like that white part right in the center. I still want that variation of color right there. Um, you can also use Theobroma. Yeah, this is actually what I'm using right now. A combination of Theobroma and uh, Sahara. Um, petal dust if you are using the palette petal dust which is a lot less messy then you can just com combine like the brown earth color and uh, plum you can use that too if you are trying to um, do the same the same color as I am but if you're using like the yellow um, the yellow uh, dancing lady then you can just do Kind of like a, a green, apple green color. Now, I'm going to take again that um, brush that I have with my burgundy um, gel paste. And you can also use brown. And just do <clears throat> random dots right in the center. And as you can see, I'm just do, doing, you know, some small dots and some large dots and just really very random. There's really no pattern or rule to it, but I would contain it to like the middle part of the flower. So, that is your finished, um flower right there and I would even try and go to that part so it doesn't have there we go so we move on to the bud part and the buds are just very easy so you just basically take some green gum paste the same the same exact shade as I used for the first part of the flower and here I'm just using the fourth to the largest and really there's no um, exact measurement for this I'm just giving you an idea how how big of a gum paste that I'm using and you can do as large as the you know the fourth or the the fourth to the largest um, uh, measurement all the way to the very first um, so that you end up with different sizes of buds. Roll that ball into a ball and then into a teardrop. Just like that. Okay. And then I'll get my two inch wire and bend that into a hook, like a closed hook. I 
brush that a little bit with the gum glue. Now insert that into the wider side of the uh, the bud, and then pinch it. Pinch the uh, the base so it closes. Sometimes it doesn't close because it's not wet, so you want to make sure that it's nice and. So after you've done that, just get your the side of your needle tool and press on the side about three or four. It depends on how the spacing of your of your lines. And the buds of the uh, of the oncidium is not really perfect perfect teardrop, so I would sometimes bend it just like so. And I just erased my lines. So you can press it again if you got erased. Okay. So I got that and you just let this dry and make um, three to five buds in one um, stem so it depends on how like you know make sure that the buds are not of the same size so here I have three different sizes of buds that I made and I'm just gonna Paint them with again this, the tiger stripes with a little bit of burgundy um, gel paste. You can also use brown. And I'm just gonna um, paint the tip like so. Okay, and then just random stripes again. And I'm just gonna start along the. Uh, the sections that we did earlier all the way to the bottom and just make sure that they alternate the first um, stripes that we did earlier so So it just looks like tiger stripes. So in one spray of this flower you can do three to five buds or even six if you if you want. And about I would say three maximum of three open flowers because um, the flowers take up so much space that if you have a lot of flowers on it you won't have space for anything else and your your spray is going to be too long so about three flowers per per spray I would say okay so to assembly I have three <clears throat> flowers that I've already painted and dusted right here and also the three buds that we did earlier And um, whatever is the, the smallest bud that I have here would be at the very top. And I would get like a number 20, this is a number 20 floral wire because you need a little bit of a, uh, of a support there. And my half with floral tape. And I always just use the halfway floral tape just because it's easier to and doesn't make my stem too too stocky. And so I'm gonna put like the end of my um, stem wire of the uh, smallest bud that I have and the tip of my um, 
floral tape that I stretched. That way it, it um, releases the adhesive. And wrap that wire at a 45 degree angle, as you can see, all the way to the tip. To where that, uh, the, the, where the gum paste and the wire meets. And then decide as to where I can put the next one that I want. And this one, I just basically measure the length of my bud and put that right where the end of the first bud is. So, again, I'm just going to put that right at the very end or the very tip of the stem wire and I would put about an inch from the tip of uh, from the end of my bud down I would put that about an inch there we go bend that over and so I can wrap that because you bend that if you bend that over as you see there was actually a hole like a gap in between those wires so I wanted to close that I'll put this in between to close that gap and continue to wrap it so that I can hide the tip of the uh, other stem whoops there we go so that's the second That's the second bud. Now the third one, again, I would measure it to about just in between, you know, the two the two buds that I did earlier. That way it's not the same height as this one and it's not as tall as the other one. So again, I'm just going to wrap that up. As you can see, I always get the tip of the floral wire and tuck it with my forefinger. That way it anchors it. And again, I'm just going to do like an inch from the base of the uh, bud down. Bend that over and cover that seam up. Alrighty, so now I have the three wires or the three buds positioned. So now the next thing would be the first uh, flower and I'd position just that right at the center. And for this one you actually want a little bit of the wire to like show. As you can see I'm leaving about three quarters of the wire of the uh, flower to show. So that's the first. The second is a little bit lower than the than the first one. So position it lower than the first one here. So the first one is like right above here. The second one would be a little bit lower. I position it about right there and again I'm going to leave about three quarters of an inch of the wire showing because that's the stem of the uh, of the flower so that's the second one and the third one would be like right on the lowest and as you can see I just alternate the, uh, the their position And I wouldn't worry about um, covering that hole or gap between the petals because chances are you wouldn't really see that gap with the flowers anyways because they're a little bit larger than the, than the buds. Okay. And then just wrap up that hole. I would leave about two to three inches of wire because that's the part that you would um, use to 
attach the spray to your uh, gum paste flower arrangement or to poke that onto a cake or the styrofoam that you need to when you're arranging the flowers. And so here is the finished spray that you have.